We're outside today. It's absolutely beautiful today. It's like 74 degrees, um, which is crazy because just a week ago it was freezing. Um, that's just Pennsylvania weather for you, but it's so beautiful. I wanted to come outside and give you a look around the homestead and the garden show you a few updates that we made to the property, some projects we're gonna be working on, and just give you an overview of the space. There's a few things that are growing, some life springing forth from the ground, which is so exciting. Um, and have this be a bit of, you know, the first official tour of the 2024 garden season. So let's get started. So before we take a little stroll around the property here, just in case you are new or newer to the channel and haven't seen the space or know what we're all about, my name is Kelsey, welcome. And we are in South Central Pennsylvania, it's zone 6B. My last frost date in the spring, I think this year is May the 8th. We have about five weeks left. Um, you are gonna hear lots of road noise. There is a major road right there. We're in the country. Honestly, we're in the middle of nowhere, but we're in town in the middle of nowhere. So we're right on the main streets. So you're gonna hear some traffic. You're gonna hear some children playing. I've got two little kiddos and some animals as well. So let's start our little stroll. We're gonna go up here to the back of the house at the deck, and then I'll give you kind of like a panoramic view of all of the, gro the growing spaces. Things are not perfect, but I've always promised you real life. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. We're behind in a lot of areas because life just happened. Um, a lot of things should be in the ground that are not. I'll show you what those things are, but let's get up to the deck here and I'll give you a peek around. So here's a view of the entire property. And we'll go up close and take a more detailed look at things here in a second and show you what we're working with. Up over here, this is on the other side of where we were just standing. Um, by the deck we've got this one raised bed here and then down here I have this tier that I do plant in. We've got some landscaping we need to do and we need to weed obviously and put down some mulch. Got my green stock up here, which is in need of some, uh, some care, some assistance. And then we have this other um, box here. Sorry, you're gonna see rabbit droppings literally everywhere <laughs> throughout the garden. We just bring them out and lay them wherever we can find a spot. So in this little space here next to the deck, it's really nice that it's right off the house. So I'm honestly thinking about making this into a little bit of a kitchen garden on a very small scale. Um, thinking about doing some of my cooler weather crops, especially like spinach and lettuce that usually just bolts and goes to seed for me right away here where we are at in PA. Um, our springs, are somewhat non-existent and they're very just all over the place weather and temperature wise um you know we just had a ton of rain and then we had a lot of freezing temps and now it's 74 degrees and then next week is supposed to rain the entire week and be in like the mid 60s and after that it goes back down to the 40s for a little bit but then it's you know it usually goes right back up so we don't have a very long period of kind of mild weather in like the 50s it just jumps from like freezing to 60. um and spinach anything above like 60 65 same thing with some lettuces it's just gonna bolt and go right to see it just gets too warm for it so i'm hopeful that because the house casts a whole bunch of shade here in this spot it stays a bit cooler and maybe i can actually get a harvest from some spinach i'd love to put some spinach away so we're gonna utilize this space for crops like that, but then also throw in maybe like a tomato plant, some onions, some herbs, maybe a few carrots, radishes, you know, just some things I can come out the back door and grab for like a salad or topping a burger, some herbs to flavor things, stuff like that. And then the, the green stock, I'm not so sure what that's going to be just yet. There's a few things that came back, some strawberries, um, I see some parsley, maybe some oregano. 
in there. I might do some a mix of herbs and flowers in the green stock up here. And then lots of flowers. We're gonna put wood chips down. I might get a little bistro table for back here in the shade. Um, but yeah, that's what this space is. This building right here is actually an old cookhouse or like a summer, a summer kitchen. Uh, you can see there's a chimney there. So um, we could put a cook stove in here if I wanted to. Um, it does have electricity in there. Um, the previous owners took their, they had a beautiful old wood cook stove. Uh, right now it just houses garden tools and kids outdoor toys, but that's a project my husband and I want to work on. We actually want to repaint it and revamp the space inside just to make it more functional. We do have some yarrow planted in this box here, which has come back nicely. I do need to come through and trim off all of the dead stuff. Um, this is where we had some petunias last year. That's just all dead. I need to get out and now there's some elderberry. This needs to get moved up to the other garden, which I'll have to do. So I've got my elderberry there and the pollinating variety right there. We're going to go up here to the top of the property before traffic gets too much worse. It's uh, nearing rush hour. So <laughs> that's just a pile of compost that Grant's been playing in. I made these rows here, just three this year, for some potatoes. Uh, the maple tree right here um, provides too much shade for anything to really grow much past this point. So that's just going to become grass at some point. We've got these two trellis here. I'm going to plant peas in those dirt mounds there and there. And then over to this side is where we have our blueberry bushes. This is the third year and they're looking pretty, pretty good. I have, I believe 11 of them. So we're gonna see if we get any blueberries this year. So in the space behind me, it's about a 25 by 25 foot plot. And along the two sides, there and there we've got some raspberries. I have some Joan J on that side and some I think it's called royalty purple. Then on this side here we have some double gold and some Anne variety. Really beautiful, super sweet. Um, originally I had about eight canes on each side here that we have trellised. So that is the biggest thing that is in here right now besides our strawberries. I have two L-shaped beds. Um, I think there's three two by six foot beds full of strawberries in this location as well. There's nothing right now in that raised bed. This one over here with the cover on it is garlic that I planted in the fall. And that I'm gonna keep the cover on, as well as any other alliums that I plant. I had the allium leaf miner last year, um, and it destroyed most of my onions, my leeks, and my garlic. So this year we're making sure to rotate those crops, not have them anywhere near the location that they were last year. And I am covering them from the start in hopes that we alleviate that problem and I actually get a harvest this year. So besides that, I've got these two round beds, the white beds in there. Uh, they're empty right now, but they're going to be home for some current plants that I have coming and a gooseberry plant and then some medicinal herbs. This space is really going to house a lot of my medicinal herbs. I'm going to have them planted kind of in throughout, but that's going to be the central location. And I'm going to do a lot of pots. I have some pots in here now, but I'm going to grab some more. That way I can control some of these herbs. Some of them can become a bit invasive, so I want to keep an eye on that um, and make sure they don't go, you know, to seed and spread everywhere. So it's a bit easier to control when they're in pots. So we're waiting on more wood chips to put down this pathway. We're gonna lay some cardboard down. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna plant anything like in the ground in this space anymore. Um, I might just be getting a whole bunch more pots and I thought it'd look kind of fun too. All right, raised bed and in-ground garden. In the very front, I have some in-ground beds. I just have some spring bulbs in. We've got a variety of tulips in here. 
some red, some white, some double orange ones that have not bloomed yet. And then we have these beautiful narcissus and daffodil. There's two different varieties. Some have this like peachy center and others have yellow. And then I have these little grape hyacinths. There's white and the purple. And then I also have some anemone in here as well. There's a variety of colors, but this is the first one that I have seen bloom. Really cute little dainty flower. Currently, this is just a blank canvas waiting for me to make something of it. So we do no dig gardening here in the center. This is Charles Downing's method. I've had great success with it so far. I really like it. So I have nine in-ground beds in here. This one is currently covered in strawberries, so don't mind that. Those are going away this weekend. I have 10 of the in-ground beds here. And then I think I have 12 raised beds around the perimeter. So here along this trellis, we're gonna do peas. I need to get those out here very soon. But the only real vegetation right now is I have a rhubarb. I did have two and one did not come back up. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to run to the greenhouse when that opens up and I'm going to grab some more. That's where I got this one two years ago. They have some really nice mature rhubarb plants. So I got one of these guys in here. And then on the second half of that bed, I have asparagus um, crowns and that whole bed is asparagus crowns. I think I have 32 plants total and today i saw my first little spear come out of the ground so this is a purple variety i have two plants that are purple and the rest are i think mary washington um this is only this one's second year so i shouldn't harvest from this one but all of my green ones are on their third year so with asparagus now i started these from seed you can buy crowns as well but i started all my asparagus from seed um like i said this is their third year you don't want to harvest prior to that third year. You need to give them a few years to um, establish, let their roots grow down, the crowns spread. Um, and then each year you want to leave some of the asparagus spears to turn into fronds um, just to continue to allow the, the plant to photosynthesize and you know, grow and get what it needs. So I should be able to harvest some of my green ones this year, although I haven't seen any pop up yet, which is slightly concerning. Usually I see something at this time. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that, but hopefully in the next week or two, I'll see some of those pop up and I will be able to eat my first asparagus beer from my own garden. So on this arched trellis here, one of my roses, one of my David Austins. This one is, ooh, what are you? It's Crown Princess Margareta, I had to cheat. Usually I know them all, but this one is on its second year. Usually it goes the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, third year they leap, and I'll show you a third year, which is definitely leapt. Um, so this is its second year. It's still doing really good. Lots of nice growth on it. Looks nice and healthy. Um, but I've always just envisioned just archways completely consumed with blooms of the roses. So this one is like a, I think a peachy, peachy cream color. And then the other one I'll show you in a second is more of a really light pinky cream color really beautiful and the blooms honestly change depending on how much sunlight they get the sunlight tends to bleach them um, but really beautiful both really fragrant i'm super excited about seeing those in bloom usually happens by the end of may it just explodes with blooms so beautiful so that's all that's going on there um, I do have some liatris behind me in the ground, there's nothing to see there, and some columbine, nothing to see there either. Um, those are perennial and come back every year. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you strawberry situation, a few other things in this space. This bed of strawberries here, this is a four by 10 foot bed. 
um, I planted last year looking really good I've cleaned that up for the most part they however spilled over into my walkway and this in-ground bed here there's a whole bunch of them I cleaned up about 500 of the plants already from this section here and over in the walkway there so this is going to get cleaned up this coming Saturday and I am taking these in to church for a few of my church family members that garden um, so this will be cleaned up by this weekend I did transplant some of those into this 4x8 bed so I'll have a second strawberry bed here and I got one in the back of the garden in the back left of the garden which is also spilled over so this needs cleaned up there are some weeds in here there's some plantain in here actually that I might let go but just another spot that needs some attention so this archway here at the back of the raised bed garden this is my third year rose David Austin it is the generous gardener absolutely stunning but you can just see it's massive it actually I don't know if you can see yeah there is a vine that has reached all the way over the top now not a vine it's down um, and there's quite a few more coming um, and it's only April so it's just gonna keep shooting off more growth but it looks so healthy and I'm so excited to see it in full bloom and hopefully another month underneath that rose is where we have some more raspberry canes these are all the Joan Jay variety or no some are Caroline some are Joan Jay the Caroline have thorns and are very very prickly the ones on this side are Joan Jay and I prefer those I think they're a heavy producer more so than the Caroline and they don't stick you which is really nice so we've got a whole bunch in here now but we had eight original canes four on this side and four on the other and this was a four by eight bed I am hopeful that this weekend I can get my cold weather crops in I want to do carrots and parsnips I need to start hardening off my cabbage spinach lettuce kale um, onions need to come out here shallots leeks need to come out here some beets lots of stuff peas um, and I also need to get my potatoes planted so yeah mental note to myself get on it so we've got this like in between place here between the raised bed and no dig and the cottage garden I just have two four by four beds in here and then this outdoor rug we have some seating here uh, not totally sure what's gonna go in here just yet but again just a blank slate the kids have their sandbox over here and they play in this area but let's focus on the cottage garden okay i'm gonna try and yell and hopefully kind of yell um speak very loudly so you can hear me i don't have a lapel mic yet i'm getting one so just bear with me on this one but let's talk about the cottage garden so this space is home for some perennial flowers, some medicinal herbs, just some culinary herbs. Um, I've got some fruit in here as well. So up in the front, I've got some lavender. This is creeping thyme here. There's some peonies. I have a peony here and a peony over in that corner. Can't tell you the varieties. My friend Heather gave them to me and I'm waiting on them to bloom. I'm hoping they bloom this year. Um, let's see got strawberries all throughout here so must still be coming up and then I've got a whole bunch of David Austin roses this one is Lady of Shalott and then we planted some in the last video so I've got Munstead wood here this one which one did I plant here this one is Bosque Bell. and then in the back here I have some black-eyed Susan and there's most likely going to be some lupin coming up as well foxglove all throughout some more lavender some parsley the overwintered and then back here this is just a red tea rose um one that was just picked up i think from a giant like food store um turned into this massive big beautiful rose bush and then this is our apple tree it's a five-way apple tree so it self pollinates there's five different varieties grafted onto one tree which is really nice for our small space 
And up here I've got, what are you? Olivia Rose Austin, beautiful rose bush. There's some salvia up here in the front, some pink and some blue. Um, I've got some columbine up here on the right. Some more foxgloves, some chives that overwintered, and some yarrow coming up. Um, this rose bush here is Princess Alexandria of Kent. It's not faring so well, so I transplanted that one, as well as the tea rose from their last spots. They were too close to the front of this opening here and they just blocked out so much of the other things I was trying to grow. So I put them more towards the back. Um, the tea rose looks like it's doing fine. There's lots of new growth on it. Princess Alexandria of Kent. We'll see if she makes it. I hope she does because she's beautiful. Um, I've got Humphrey back here at the base of the tree. A big butterfly bush here. There's milky here. There's funnel in the back. There's echinacea, some sweet pea. And then all along the left side is Leatris. Off to the side here, we've got some grow bags. I'm going to put some sweet potatoes in here this year and try that out. I've done them in the raised beds before, but I'm trying to control the soil a bit more, make sure it's really nice and loose. Loamy, I'm gonna put some sand in here, some more potting soil. Right now, these are just filled with straight compost. This space is just a tad different than the last time I showed you. We used to have um, like a compost bin over here. Um, wasn't really working the way we wanted it to and it was just an eyesore still have some cleaning up to do over here but we built um we just extended this bed all the way out to the side of the garage so this whole space here is going to be for tomatoes then here along the garage is a new space i did have an in-ground bed here before but nothing really grew because it was just super rocky next to the foundation of the garage so we built it up matt built me these three raised beds the entire length is 24 feet and they're two feet wide so i'm debating whether or not we're going to put more trellising up here and do some squash in here that can grow up the trellis maybe some tomatoes maybe sunflowers and something else i don't know this right here is a grapevine i don't think i've ever shown it before it this is its third year so maybe we'll get a little bit off of it but it was just laying here on the ground so we got it planted up in here and have the vines kind of threaded throughout there and we'll see how it does this year making our way back over here got our greenhouse which i'm not going to take you inside right now because it is a disaster it's a project for another day i've been saying that i think for the last few videos that it's been in it still isn't done you can kind of see through the yeah, it's messy. Um, this is a new bed we just put in last week and we put some blackberries in here. I had these in pots and they were just in there because I didn't know where to put the blackberries and they needed, they needed more space. They weren't doing well. So I've got three blackberry canes in here and I have two more coming from Norse Farms that are gonna complete this bed. And then if we walk around here, we have this bed. I'm not so sure if I'm gonna plant anything in here, but I'm thinking I might give the kids free reign over this one, um, just for fun. I want them to get their hands in the dirt and start growing some things too. So this will be a space that they can control. And I figured Grant would like to put his little trucks and stuff in here and dig around in the dirt. So that pretty much wraps up our growing space. For now, I'm gonna be expanding and I'll show you that in a moment. But the last thing here on the property is our chicken coop and run. I've had a few of you ask over the last year if we have plans for this chicken coop. We don't, my husband just kind of put it together with a friend. Um, he's pretty handy like that. It's really, really nice around the homestead. You know, I ask him to do something and he just makes it happen. It's really nice. Um, so. I'm sorry, I don't have any plans for that. Um, it is big enough for 12 hens. <laughs> we pushed the limits on that a little bit. Right now we have 10 layers and one rooster. We have four chicks inside right now. Um, 
each spring we like to add about four to our laying flock because some of these girls are pushing three, four years. I think maybe four years. Um, and we're noticing they're not laying quite as much. So eventually they might end up in the soup pot. I know it doesn't sound very nice, but we can't just keep them as pets here. We don't just, don't have the means for that. We don't have the space for that. So, um, uh, and you know, in the last few years, we've had a few just succumb to old age or disease or, or something. I think we had one had a heart attack the one year. Um, so it just happens and we like to make sure that we have more layers to take their place. So we've got those four inside and they will move out into our little um, makeshift chicken tractor over here um, and they'll go out with the big ladies probably uh, within the next six weeks or so. Um, but there are those chickens. Let's go check out the meat birds. So here we are in the garage, and this is where we keep our Cornish cross and this brooder mat built. Right now we had, well we had 30, two did not make it, so we have 28 right now. So they're about two weeks old, and they're already looking plump. Um, we usually butcher by eight or nine weeks, just depending on the weather. Um, so we've got around six more weeks to go with these guys. We do use, we have a heat plate out here. We had um, a heat lamp, that's what we had done for the last two years. We would just put wire over the top to make sure it couldn't fall through and you know it worked fine but we decided to upgrade to the heat plate here and they all really like that. We do have a bulb here, it's just, it's not a heat bulb. Um, because it gets really dark in here and they just always think it's nighttime and time to sleep. So we do keep that on uh, during the day for them. Let's carry these guys. So besides some of the like painting projects with the chicken coop, I'm gonna be painting the cookhouse. I wanna revamp the greenhouse. I wanna put a raised bed in there to try and extend my seasons. Uh, I wanna repaint the deck, do some landscaping. Lots of smaller projects. We have one really big project coming up in the next few weeks. Matt and some of his buddies are going to be taking down this whole row of Arborvita. They have probably been here for close to 70 years according to the previous owner. She remembers them when she was little and she's somewhere around 50. Um, they are a huge eyesore. They were never maintained. They were put in as a living fence but just nothing was ever done with them then. Um, they take up a ton of space and they also provide a lot of shade back here which does affect a good portion of the garden we don't get a whole lot of afternoon sun um so we are going to be taking them down and in doing that we're going to gain about 30 feet in that direction we can extend our yard 30 feet and these span about 100 feet all the way down the property line um, we've been putting it off for a long time because number one it's a massive undertaking to get these things out of here. Um, some of the stumps of them are just massive. Um, and on top of that, you know, we live right next door to our, our neighbors are like right on top of us and we like the privacy. So the cost of a fence was also coming into play. So we have saved enough to at least do this section. We're not gonna fence it in the entire yard. We're gonna do a privacy fence between us and the neighbors. So that is the next big project. It opens up a lot of doors for us. Um, we're gonna gain a lot of space. So not totally sure what we're gonna do with that space just yet. Um, we were thinking maybe um, just place area for the kids like with a swing set or possibly putting in a gazebo at some point because we are going to be losing all of the shade in the backyards so we'd like somewhere we could escape from the sun so maybe a gazebo maybe just having some area for the chickens to forage and for us to pull the chicken tractor through maybe more animals we don't know but we're really excited at the prospect and the idea of having more space in our little quarter acre backyard. Um, you can do a lot in a quarter acre and this new space is gonna allow us to do even more. Okay, my friend, that wraps up 
the first official tour of the 2024 garden season. You get to see everything at a blank slate and from here on out it's just going to continue to fill up. Um, so hopefully this week I can get some seed sown, get my seedlings hardened off and planted, keep working with my prep work. Hopefully we get some wood chips soon and get that done and then we got lots things happening, lots of projects coming. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed. You have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.